Thank you very much for making a date. Welcome back. Now, the Bank of Ghana is threatening to withdraw liquidity support for one of the troubled banks. This could force the regulator to appoint an advisor to deal with the situation or management or result in the management takeover of the said bank. Let's give you some details in the following report. Sources say the communication from the Bank of Ghana was said to have been made last week. Even though Joy Business has a name of this bank, we would want to hold on to it for now. It is also unclear what might have influenced the regulator's decision to possibly take this action. But industry persons say it could be due to the fact that the current structures at the bank is not helping with respect to the funds that the regulator is pushing into this institution. The banking questions woes have been worsened by the panic withdrawals from some of its prime customers over the past months. This has resulted in some serious pressure on its finances and even making it difficult to meet some demands of its customers and depositors. Now, two options might be left for the regulator. That is, if it goes ahead to take the said troubled bank of life support, then the regulator might be forced to appoint an individual to directly supervise the operations of a said bank or be compelled to take over the bank by appointing an administrator. The troubled bank is very worried by the regulator's action, especially when some measures are being taken to quickly deal with their situation as well as meet the new minimum capital requirement even before the December 2018 deadline. Now, managers of Apex Bank are proposing local assemblies allow rural and community banks to manage their resources from the common fund. They argue district assemblies have often relied on rural and community banks because they find it easier than commercial banks. Managing director Kojo Mata believes such arrangements will strengthen the capital base of rural and community banks. We also want to appeal to government to channel some of the district assemblies common funds through the rural and community banks. As we said, we are in every district and whenever the assemblies needed help, they fall on the rural banks and we think it is just appropriate that the rural banks are given the opportunity to manage some of these uh, assemblies common funds. And we think it is another way of uh, encouraging uh, or strengthening the banks in the rural areas. Well, we will, we will want to encourage people to bank with rural and community banks. We are doing everything possible to improve on our, the quality of our services. And we would like feedback from the community, from our customers and non-customers. Uh, we are working on rebranding the rural and community banks, refreshing some of the brands, and uh, even improving on uh, training for customer service because we believe the customer is king and we want to treat them like kings. They should assess our services and we, we are putting all the technology in place to be able to serve them seamlessly so that they will have the joy that they, will, they all they get at other places. Well, so rural and community banks uh, presently have over 700 branches in all districts within the country. Managers say this provides a good base for the financial inclusion campaign. According to Kojo Mata, wide coverage gives opportunities for rural banks to become the main driving force for government's industrialization projects. We are in every district of this country, over 700 rural banks or rural bank branches. So we think we are very poised. We are in the position to support government's one district, one factory uh, program. Because when there are factories in the district or in every district, they will need banking services. And we are on the ground. So we think we are in a good position to support government's one district, one factory. Where they need funding, where they need uh, banking services, we are there to help the uh, the workers and uh, other service providers and that is why we think rural and community banks are in the position to support government uh, pro program one district one factory having said that we also supported government's program of planting for food and jobs we 
participated in the uh, in receiving the deposits from the farmers and uh, thereafter they will go to the districts or the, the the places that they collected their inputs we have used our network to be able to achieve this and we think with our network we'll be able to support government in its uh, quest to have these factories in every every district all right, so you're still in the marketplace. And transactions done on mobile money platforms have reached 52 billion CDs for the first quarter of this year. This according to data secured from the Bank of Ghana uh, recently. Now, we get more details on this particular uh, development from George Riafi, but we understand news just coming in indicates the Bank of Ghana has come out with a, uh, a platform, uh, sorry, a policy uh, recently, and we want to to tend to George to give more us more of a that. policy document trying to assure depositors and industry players that the banking sector is safe. Now, if you go through the document, it highlights what was the problem or mm. how the problem started. First, in 2015, where some of the banks were not that capitalized, they gave out loans that were in bad and that has impacted on the operations. Also, the bank in that policy document highlighted some uh, serious corporate governance flaws in this banking sector, and that is why we have seen these problems being happening. Also, that document spoke about the fact that most of these banks, as a result of these challenges, were put under some sort of liquidity support. What that document failed to highlight or talk about was the amount. But again, if you try and fish through the Bank of Ghana's documents in separate engagement, you find out that as at the end of last year, in terms of cumulative payments, you've seen about uh, over 5 billion Ghana cities being extended to some of these banks that are going through some challenges. That policy document again talks about the fact that some of these measures would include strict enforcement of its laws, trying to recapitalize, bringing about this Basel II or this new accounting procedures that will ensure that banks are capitalized also based on their risk or exposure, trying to also work together with other regulators in the industry to ensure that a bank cannot hide behind saying that I'm coming up with an insurance product, therefore I went to the insurance commission. If we are doing anything in the financial space, both the Bank of Ghana the Insurance Commission, the Security Nation Commission are going to work together. They conclude that statement saying that all these measures are meant to restore confidence in the banking sector and ensure that it is safe and is sound and nobody should panic. Despite reports about some banks getting into serious financial distress. All right, so this, this uh, assurance came up in the past, but we heard from this our very first story indicating that the troubled bank may lose its liquidity <laughs> support. <laughs> It, it, it's more of a document on the policy. Mm. So first it was more of them responding to questions thrown by journalists. But now it looks like this is a clear-cut policy that okay. we are implementing. And therefore let's advance this to all players in the industry to let them appreciate that this is what we are doing. So it's not just about a spoken commitment, but something that they've actually documented to work with going forward this year and going into next year. And they believe that that should give some assurance to industry persons as to what the Bank of Ghana is doing, what they intend to do right. to try and calm the waters for people not to panic and rush into these commercial banks in trying to actually take their money from the banks. And again, data suggests that some banks are benefiting from this because of what is happening. Right. Some of them <coughs> are moving their deposits to different banks because of the fear that they're going to go down. All right, let's come to the main issue here. And uh, we hear, you know, mobile transactions have mm. hit 52 mm. billion Ghana mm. cities. What more do you... Well, if you go through that document again that was released by the Bank of Ghana, again, you see that in terms of the same quarter last year to this quarter, it's gone up by almost 50% uh, in terms of this is just the value of money mm. that have moved from different platforms uh, to other platforms on this mobile money wallet. And this is just a cumulative calculation. Now, if you look at, or if you want to look at the mobile money accounts that are currently held in commercial banks, we're looking at 2.2 billion Ghana cities. Mm. Now, if you also compare this figure to what was recorded in the first quarter of 2016, that represent almost 49% jump in the numbers so in terms of these accounts of money. Now let's look at the mobile money merchants as well. The data puts the figure 161,000 persons out there who are engaged in mobile money transactions. Now, 
who is the biggest gainer in terms of the telco. The figure again gives an indication that MTN is the leader. It is commanding over 90% of these amounts that are held in commercial banks. So let's do the math here. Mm. 2.2 billion Ghana cities, 90% of it, MTN has those money. Now, so what does it tell us? Does it mean people are now losing gradually confidence in the traditional banking system? Not, not necessarily. And again, mobile talk about mobile. traditional accounts. And mm. if you look at the account holders on the mobile money account, you're looking at about over 11 million. Now, that number is obviously bigger or larger than the traditional account. Okay. I think that if you engage the industry experts, they'll talk about convenience. So the fact that you can be in a Brunkuku Yoyo and the fact that there's a network there, someone has access to more money wallet, you can wire money from a cry here to your cousin or your mother in that area. So it's about the convenience of the service and the ease. For instance, if I want to move money right now from my wallet to somebody in Cape Coast, it can be done within two minutes, a minute, mm. compared to trying to move your account or even transfer an account from or transfer money from a traditional account to another account. Walk into the banking hall, the queues, the documentation and all that. So the ease and also the fact that you can walk down the road mm. and get a transaction done for you that is making it more easier for more persons to sign up onto this more money wallet. And that is what is driving the growth of the service, which industry experts are saying that we should even expect more growth in the service. Now, George, that does not reinforce you know, the argument that these telecoms companies are wrapping each other vehemently with uh, banks. It's interesting that in terms of the, having the first call, yes, the telcos may have it in terms of getting the direct contract with the public and mobilizing these deposits. But yeah. again, when you go through the report, it's clear that most of these mobile money accounts, at the end of the day, these telcos take it to the commercial bank to hold it for them. Okay. So indirectly, they will still take the money back to the commercial banks. The interest or the edge that the telcos will have over these commercial banks, the fact that we have here, I'm a telco, mm -hmm. I get access to mobilize the deposit from you. Then I have the advantage of telling the bank out there that, okay, I have Two billion with me in my chest. Now I'm asking for treasury bill rate plus 10. Mm. Then I'm asking more from that. If you, the bank, had access to those accounts, then you have a better advantage of also mobilizing cheap deposits and also on lending to the public. All so right. it's more of them playing a complementary role right. uh, than uh, competing with each other. Thank you very much, George, so for much. that update. My colleague, George, we are here bringing us up to speed with some development in the banking sector. Let's now turn our attention to the downstream petroleum oil and gas sector and the Ghana LPG Operators Association has issued a one-week ultimatum to government and the Ministry of Energy to withdraw the cylinder recirculation module policy or else make the government feel the heat from the association. It says it believes the policy is an attempt to push members out of business and therefore threaten they will not sit down for government to victimize them and destroy local businesses. Following the gas explosion at the atomic junction last year, cabinet acted promptly by issuing a directive for replacement of the existing LPG marketing and distribution system with a new cylinder or recirculation module. But at a press conference in Accra, the LPG operators said the estimated number of seven, the estimate, the number of total number of 7,000 jobs will be lost if this policy is implemented. We have the national organizer of the association, Nanaba Collins, on the line to give us more on this particular development. Good afternoon, sir. Welcome to the marketplace. Thank you, Val. Now, so what makes you come out with this uh, particular you know, ultimatum? Because you, you've already been sitting with government to plan this whole model. You've been involved. So why at this time? Thank you, sir. In fact, we have not given the government any of this. We always said, if we do not ask upon what we said, we will advise ourselves. We are not giving government one week of money, but we rather said, come out to withdraw the policy, and we will advise ourselves. All right, now. Your government has assured you that you are totally not going to be left out of this whole process. Why don't you still have some confidence in what government is saying? Uh, in the election, we are going to face out in the system. The policy we have put in place, in the election, we as leaders, we are going to face out in the system. This and many more, we have come to negotiate with them. But yes, so it's 
still this don't take out the field. That's what we have come out to question the government that if we do not keep it our concerns, we advise ourselves. All right, so what, what are you going to do? What's the action you're going to take? If it's not an ultimatum, what are you going to do? That one, you have to leave it to my president. He will alert us when they see this. It's deep. Now, so at, at what stage are you now? I know you are getting ready to come out with a licensing regime. That's a committee set up by government to do that. Uh, what stage are you now, and what are you doing to help? In fact, uh, as I speak with you now, our bank has changed out because we own them and we cannot afford to pay. Since they said that this part, this part is going to happen, it, they no longer loan us anymore. So most of our members are now starting to face us on the system because of this policy the government is about to implement. And let me tell you for sure. Apart from trying to face us on the system, for those who have no knowledge about what LPG, who don't have any thoughts and who don't have any idea about LPG, they are rather in the system operating. I'm talking about uh, other institutions who own vessels at their premises. These people don't have any idea about what gas is. Yes, so they have. LPG at their premises, uh, giving them whatever needs for their. And so, what we are saying is CRM or single integration cannot take away gas expression from the system or from the country. All right. So, hello? All right. Thank you very much, uh, Nanaba Collins, for that update. We'll get back to you uh, later on in the course of our bulletins. Away from that, farmers in Ghana have for years depended on rains to cultivate crops. Whether the planting season starts early or delayed is usually determined by when the rains set in. But with irrigation, crops that have become known as seasonal foods could be cultivated all year round. Thanks to an elaborate irrigation system, Integrate Water and Agriculture Development Ghana Limited is able to grow four types of grains all year round. Joy News has added at our reports. Covering 400 hectares of land, the thousands of sorghum and maize plants do not show any sign of wilting, even under the scorching sun here in Yapaga in the Upper East region. All year round, grains such as maize, sorghum and rice are cultivated and fed with water from nearby Coupon River through an elaborate irrigation system. Water is pumped from the, the Coupon River. Into, into a reservoir, which is about uh, 18,000 cubic meters volume of water uh, capacity. And um, water from the, the reservoir, uh, where we call the booster station, is, is then pumped to the four different irrigation systems. We need what to do what you call a dry run. Participants of the Cosmos Agritech Challenge, who are on a market research tour, are told the irrigation system is one of its kind in the northern part of the country. We have the centre pivot, four of the centre pivots. An area under the centre pivot is 65 hectares. We have uh, almost about 100 hectares under modified drag lines sprinkler system. We have 15 hectares of drip and then we have 39 hectares of uh, furrow irrigation mainly flood irrigation for rice. The company also engages several farmers in the community. One of the art growers, Haruna Tido, says he is able to provide food for his family from the profit he makes working on the land he's been given. You are given a portion of land 
seeds and fertilizer. I cultivated five acres of maize and two and a half acres of rice. I have harvested 90 bucks and repaid the company with 75 bucks. I then sold five bucks to the company and took the remaining 10 bucks home. And I'm the five bucks. The farm multiplies seed crops for the Savannah Agricultural Research Institute of the CSIR for redistribution to farmers engaged in government's planting for food and jobs program. The Integrated Water and Agriculture Development Ghana Limited says it is able to support outgrowers and also provide services to the Savannah Agricultural Research Institute thanks to its irrigation system that supplies the right amount of water the crops need. The limiting factor to production is water. And as, uh, as in when you, you provide water, you are, you are ready to, to kickstart production. So with the uh, irrigation system, we are able to start production sometimes earlier before the rains. So we start with the irrigation, we get uh, uh, the rains take over, and then if there's any need for any supplementary rains, we come in with irrigation, and we are able to produce uh, all year round. Grains from this farm feed several markets and food processing companies across the country. Adelaide Arthur, Joy News, Yapaga. Now the Japan Textiles and Akosombo Textile Limited are set to receive a portion of funds allocated for existing but struggling companies as part of the stimulus package program by the government. These funds were released uh, when released are expected to complement the efforts by management of the companies to turn around the fortunes of the once vibrant textile manufacturing firms. This was disclosed by Deputy Minister of Trade and Industry Carlos Ahinkra in an interview with after the opening of the second Ghana-China Week trade in Accra. To uh, um, uh, strengthen these textile companies by giving them what we call the stimulus package or the bailout as the development world will call it for them to stand on their feet. As we speak now, Akosomo Textiles and Japan Textiles are huge benef beneficiaries of uh, this uh, stimulus package program. All this in the effort to get them working again, in the effort to get our brothers and sisters uh, back to business. Uh, the president's vision is to ensure that we industrialize and we are now about to see uh, one or two of them going down before we even start industrialization. So I want my brothers and sisters the Tesla you know, to see this not as a Tesla manufacturing company exercise, but as a national exercise which encompasses the vision of, of, of a leader who intends to make things work. How soon are we going to see all these visions? Well, for your information, we set up the task force in May last year. Yes. And um, unfortunately, because we said that we're not going to start our program from the market, the Tesla company represented refused to attend. And they have refused to attend up and until this time. Try that as we have, the not badge. They no intent coming in. I myself have had occasion to call upon the um, um, bosses, the owners of the Tesla companies, and unfortunately, I don't get that response that I, I want. So we're still jaw joining, we're still talking to them. If they will listen to us, if they will understand that um, they have tried this particular process for a very long time, it hasn't worked. So they should try my vision too. They should try the ministry's vision, the new government's vision too, and see how we can also bring this. Uh, uh, And this is where we draw the curtains down on this afternoon's edition of the Marketplace. It's been great having you on board. My name is Imano Abuaji. We are free. Let's meet again same time tomorrow on the same network. Good afternoon.